I'm Becky Adlington, double gold medalist, and the Let's Teams have invited me down to talk about how I found growing up and everything that goes with it. Find out more at becomingateen.co.uk. Always boys. <laughs> I think that was the main thing at school was boys, whether it was even at swimming, it was kind of like, oh, she fancies him and he fancies her. And it was always exactly the same at school as well. And it was always the case that I, I swear, like me and my friends just swapped boyfriends on a weekly rotor. It was just like the most bizarre thing. And it was like, will you ask it, ask him out? And will you go and ask her? And I'm like, why don't you go speak to them yourselves? But it was like, no, you could never go speak to the boy that you fancied. You always had to go and ask your mate or write it on a piece of paper at school. And we be my boyfriend. It was always one of those. I think for me it was always so nice being friends with the guy. I think that was a massive thing that, and sport gave me that, that even at swimming, because a lot of my relationships came from the sport world, because you spend so much of your time together. They see you at your worst point at five in the morning, grumpy, going, no, leave me alone. And yet you still just got on. You were just best friends. You just spent so much time together. And that just put me at ease, getting to know the person first and just going up and being like, hi, are you okay? And it wasn't a case of, I've got to flirt and got to do this straight away because that would come if you fancied them. It was about getting to know them as a person first. I was about 11 or 12 and I can remember him asking my parents if he could take me out on a date and it was so cute and it was for Valentine's Day and he picked me up with his dad and him picked me up and we went out for a meal and stuff and I was like, this feels very grown up. I swear I must have kissed someone when I was like four, just like in the playground and getting on, but um, I can't actually re genuinely remember my first proper kiss and that's awful because it must not have been very good. <laughs> it didn't obviously stick in my memory. Um, so no, can't remember that properly. I can remember my first boyfriend, but I don't think my first kiss was my first boyfriend, which is shocking. over it straight away I think you have to go through the mourning period you have to kind of cry and let it out and be a little bit mad and angry that's fine it's absolutely fine to do that I think just using your friends and time does heal all but I think just being with my mates really helped actually just but they just everyone picks picks you up don't they you all rally round when somebody goes through that and it's like even now when my friends do that I'm like right come over we're gonna have pizza and wine we're gonna get just talk about it, watch movies and just get the ice cream out, bake a cake and do stuff. And even at school, it was just a case of just let's just do something fun. Get out of the house, just do something different. Go to the cinema, take your mind off it. Hell at times, I think my parents would describe it. I think it was, uh, yeah, pretty intense having three girls who were in five years together so my eldest is five years older than me and my sister's in the middle and it just used to be like stop stealing my stuff stop doing that leave me alone get out of the way and being the baby I just wanted to follow my sisters everywhere I looked up to them I idolized them yet they don't want their baby sister hanging out with them so I was always just kind of like being kicked out of people's bedrooms no bedroom and I'd be like please I just wanted to be like them and follow them so there was definitely a lot of arguments definitely a lot of squabbles but also good times as well Definitely. I think there was a lot of occasions where we argued about mobile phones. That was always a big thing when we were allowed them, how much we were allowed to be on them. We always had a rule that no phones at the dinner table. My sister broke that most for definite. Just things that you couldn't, couldn't wear. I always wanted my belly button pierced and things as well, but my mum was like, no, wait till you're 16. And there was like definitely boundaries. Um, and I was just like, that's not fair. She was allowed to do this and what makeup I used to be able to wear or how we used to go out the house put a longer dress on or do this. There was always definitely them fights, but um, I think we always managed to find a compromise in there somewhere. <laughs> 
I think for me it was always a case of I had to earn stuff if I wanted it. So if I wanted to go to the cinema with my friends, or then my dad was like, right, if you clean your room and wash my car, you can go, go that. And it was like, I earned stuff. And then I felt really proud when I got to go and it made it extra like, oh yeah, I've got to go to the cinema today because I've done this and this. And it just used to make it so much better when you did get a treat. And same with other stuff. like. If it was a case of, right, mum, I won't wear this, this, I won't wear that here and there, but for this disco that I've got next week, can I please wear that? Then it used to be a bit more of a compromise, and I think it was always some things are more important than others, and I used to kind of appreciate that, that actually, just to go back to the cinema, I don't need to wear that, but for the disco next week, actually, I didn't really want to wear that, so it was always just about winning those battles as well. Mm -hmm.